Uh, hi everybody, my name is Chadi Wang. Okay, so today I will be presenting a bit about uh, GraphQL and ReactJS. Okay, so uh, I'm an entrepreneur myself, then I'm also developer designers. So by the time that I'm actually exploring about GraphQL, okay, I was quite excited. Okay, and then I feel that this is the next big thing on the API backend and come front end development. All right. So uh, a bit about myself. I I was from the uh, a big on Ruby on Rails, also like Django, Laravel, and all this framework. Okay, but I feel that nowadays we should be more to the framework. Uh, we are not dependent on any other frameworks to 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 develop our backend or or I can put it maybe in the future we just like make sure all our applications are serverless okay so one of the way to achieve that we can actually use GraphQL and also uh, okay so uh, for the GraphQL itself you can find resources on the website like how how to GraphQL, GraphQL or Apollo data itself. Okay, then you can visit medium.com and just Google it or just search. Okay, and then yes, GraphQL is infected by Facebook back in 2009. Okay, and then uh, together with React, but it's GraphQL is only used for React JS, yes, so the answer is no, right? So uh, let me continue. So uh, in this presentation, I will not discuss so much about the details of of the backend application, but let's take a look at the REST API. So this is the way we call the REST API. Maybe we just call a HTTP GET command. This is the first step. If let's say I want to call, I want to get the users, then I get the users, okay? If I want to get, then the next thing I want to get my post, I make another call again to get my post. And if I want to call a follower, I will get another request, okay, to get a follower. So we done three requests in each different endpoint to fetch all the required data, okay. So what's next? In GraphQL, we can only we only need to do one single query to get everything. Okay, and this really changed the whole paradigm of API. Okay, we can actually cache it on the back end. We can also cache it on the front end. Okay, and there's a lot more flexibility we can play in this game, and also uh, let's understand a bit why is GraphQL. So GraphQL is not a database technology, but it's an API technology. We can actually use uh, GraphQL with anything else. We can use with SQL, no SQL, MySQL, MongoDB, Redis. Even we can interface with Rise itself. Okay, so there is no uh, a way or something to to define GraphQL by saying this is API technology. Okay, in fact, in the early days. Facebook developed this GraphQL is for routing purposes. It's just to route controller. Okay. So uh, why GraphQL? Basically, it's easy and simple. I I like the idea of uh, self-document. Okay. I will show you guys this. Okay. Because in REST API development, we do need some other interface like Swagger or Postman to actually document the API for our team. Okay. And then the document can be massive. Okay. Once we develop more and more API. But then in GraphQL itself, you do not need to. Okay. You basically just need to code your backend and it's self-documented. I will show you guys in a while why I say so. All right. So uh, why not we use both GraphQL and REST in the matter of fact, I see you both. Okay, some I can tell you guys most of my API 95% of it is GraphQL right now, maybe only 5% is still using request call. Okay, some of the 
API that see using request call mainly for attachment, files, and also like generation of PDF or something like that. All right. But anything related to data, I've been using almost 100% GraphQL. All right. All right. So let's talk a bit about the technology stack. It's a very crowded space actually. You see like in any kind of uh, programming interface, we can find the interface for, for GraphQL itself. Okay. And then technology stack that I prefer is uh, React and Apollo. Okay. So why so? First is by using React itself, I can actually develop for web. I can actually develop for native and all kind of platform. And then I just need to focus on one single language, ES6. Okay, and it built in real time API under the hood. Okay, so so we might not need a database, real time database like Firebase anymore. Okay, by just using this Apollo server. Okay, basically, Apollo also is an open source application developed by Meteor to fulfill, uh, to encourage people to use GraphQL, All right? So, okay, this is the concept of the GraphQL. Maybe just see this screen first to remember, okay? I will show you guys in the code in a while, okay? So, so we have a schema, we have resolver, and we have client. It's actually that simple. One, two, three step only. All right? And then uh, I prepared two, two GitHub. This is a public GitHub. One is for the back end and another one is for the front end. Okay. Let's see the code right now. All right. I think it's, is it is it too big or too small? Okay, so uh, when we first set up, uh, so let me talk a bit about backend first. Okay, so this is the this is the backend, this is the front end. Okay, then this is uh, what are the dependency that we need for the backend is Apollo server. But of course, in other programming, we we can use Ruby, we can use Python, anything you like. Okay, but why I choose Apollo server? I think the only the only API library that have a real time support, fully support, is uh, Apollo Server. Okay. Other than that, like uh, Ruby, we don't have the the real time support, and also for Phoenix or or Elixir, we do have that, but I need to create my own interface. Okay. So it's not uh, natively built within Apollo itself, right? So. These are just the few dependency we can see Apollo server, we have GraphQL and we have GraphQL tools. Okay. So uh, I'm using Express.js to set up the whole server. Basically it's uh, fairly simple. First is I, I just need to import my schema. Okay. And then, okay, pardon me. I just do an introduction first on this. Okay. Basically, just to get the idea of GraphQL, how easy is that? All right. Then uh, we need to remember just to set up the cost. Okay. Then this is the uh, parser information to actually set up the GraphQL on this. All right. So uh, let me show you a bit of the GraphQL. So in this project, I'm we are trying to do. We are trying to get a. Uh, uh, information from REST API, okay, and we translate it to GraphQL itself, okay. So this is the, I have three projects, okay. So this po these three project will help you to understand what is GraphQL about, okay. The first one we just want to do a very simple currency rates. So I'm getting Coinbase API, okay. So we just need to check the currency. And we we just need to check the the exchange rate, okay? So let's see the data point that they returns. So we have currencies, right? So we have the ID, we have the name, and we have the minimum size. That's returned from the REST API stuff, right? So 
first, let's de define a schema. So we have a currency. Okay. So I just blatantly map the fields itself. Okay. Once we have a schema, I just get back to here again. We have a resolver. Okay. Basically, schema is to point, is your model, basically, to point to where you are. And then, resolver is to translate to you what kind of data that you should return. You should return a data or you should return error. Alright. So, uh, in this, Alright, okay, for this currency, so I just need to do a fetch, okay, then return it to JSON, and just return my data. So, I I did explain that it's a self-documented API, right? So I define schema, I define my resolver. So I have an input, and I have an output, and then here itself is the, is the document, okay? I didn't write any swaggers. Okay, I didn't set any information. So it just be generated on my GraphQL. GraphQL is just a it's just a client to interface with a GraphQL API. It's like your console for for GraphQL. Okay? So if let's say I'm checking out currency, you see I have all this. So I know that what is the currency that I need to to return. So what I need to query is just very simple like this currencies then I want to get the ID you see you see over here I want to get the name and all this interface is auto complete for you it's very nice interface then I I need to get the minimum size or something like that or I might not need this also so I just run it so it will call coinbase API and return back in graph QL format right so it's that simple and that straightforward, right? So in this, so let's see this interface. So I need to pass on the US dollar to get the rates, okay? Then this US dollar is a is a currency itself, right? I'm sorry. So, so we need to get a currency for the drop down box, and then we need to do a second query to to get this table. Basically, it's the rates. Okay, so what I need to do is So let's recap I have a currency here I have the currency code, everything else And then I need to display this table So I need to call a second API again Then I, of course, I forget about my fields, so I just need to check here. Then I can I can know that uh, what the information that I want to get from the currency stuff. Okay, so currency, I can return a currency, I can return a rate stuff. So you see the way I chain my information down, rate is a, another object, in fact. Okay, so I have currency, then I have a red. Okay. So you see the information over here, the currency, the rates, and it's all here. Okay, let's go back to the front end. So I have a component. Okay, in this component itself, I'm I'm using the the way that they advertise. Okay, uh, we are using the HOD. Let me let me just show you this. So we have React Apollo. Okay, so React Apollo is a HOD is higher order component for Apollo itself. So it 
wrap around your your main component and translate all your GraphQL uh, mutation query to a state. Alright. So from this one, what I need to do is just like uh, I need to define my my query by the currency self, then I need to, to define another query once I get the information of the drop downs. Okay. So okay, this is my render method. Then this is my functions, the HSOD function to wrap around my current component itself. Okay. Then from this component, okay, I'm using a function called compose. Basically, compose allow you to attach more than one GraphQL query. Okay. And what are these GraphQL queries? So let me show you. So we have a query over here. Then we have a currency. And this this currency information are the are the same existing query that we are using that I've been showing you in here. Alright. So uh, once I get my currency. Okay, so what I just need to do is I will get all this information from the wrapper itself from the proper from props, okay? And then I just need to store it to my currency and rates. Then everything will just map it by itself. <coughs> Alright. When I have something changed, so when I change my drop down over here. I say to another currency. So it's taking out from the server. Okay. So this is the calculation by the Coinbase itself, Coinbase API. Okay. And then, uh, so what I just need to do is, I just need to call these functions, and this function, I just need to do a refresh. Okay. Basically, refresh is to call back again the data and to present in the state itself okay so uh, this is one of the case study okay it seems complicated it seems uh, magical but after you you understand this a bit you will not feel that way but let me show you the easy way okay so so we have another api set okay i get this api from the coin market uh, cap okay so let's see the API reference okay so basically I just want to get a tickers of the information all right okay so this is the second component that we are doing okay okay in this second component, I'm using uh, Apollo Fetch. Apollo Fetch is like Fetch, basically. It's the same thing, okay? But it's just interface used for, for GraphQL, okay? So when I back to the code, if I say in this render method, I actually didn't wrap anything, you see? I just return the component myself. Is uh, is quite different with this one. Sorry. Okay. So this one, when I render this, I actually didn't return this, but I I re I wrap around the HSOD. Okay. So before the component is loaded, the GraphQL will cast and load everything else first, and pass it to the props, and the props will present all the information. Okay. But in this way. In the second way that I'm going to show you, I'm not going to do that, okay? But I'm I'm using the same traditional way that you call REST API, okay? So uh, you need to first you need to handle the data load. So I I just do Apollo first and just set it to the state, okay? 
but if let's say there's any other uh, changes okay if let's say I'm I'm doing a refresh it will just call again the same function over here and set the state again so this is just a very simple way of uh, using GraphQL if let's say we don't want to use the SOD but the benefit of the SOD is like we can later part we can cast the data then we can even use the Apollo link stat okay basically Apollo link stat is to replace Redux okay so everything will be managed within GraphQL environment itself the state the global data storing the caching mechanism offline information so it's like the whole package of framework presented to you right so uh, so the third type I'm is a bit more complicated okay okay for the for the last one this one I want to explain a bit more about the back end okay how complex the back end can be or how simple that you can think of for the back end okay so this is I get from the crypto watch API okay so what I'm trying to do here I'm I'm trying to get the exchange information whether it's GDAX what's the currency then I just need to pull out information depend on the which currency and which market exchange <coughs> right and then uh, so basically I need to call three chain of uh, GraphQL API so let's us dissect a bit of the API from the public API from the crypto watch itself right so I will need to get the asset I will need to get the market right so all this information that I need to get so I have prepared the sorry. I prepared the back end. Okay. So we need to get exchange. So this is the way we call spread set forward. I just need to fetch and return it to JSON and of course I need to match all the schema I need to match all the schema for the exchange okay the exchange will return name symbol route active and this I will map it here you see it's the same mapping in fact okay and then I will have the the asset information the asset also is the same information over here all right all right it's over for the exchange first okay so what we are going to do here is like we need to query exchange so when i do the query this one you see is is auto complete I always refer to my uh, schema basically to see the name okay so I just run it and then it will call the API map everything up and you get all the information okay basically the step is just like you get the asset API then you just need to map it there's no there's no magic I, I didn't do anything else I just need to map it based on the the data that I get back from the JSON call itself right and then uh, the next thing that I want to show you is like so so once I get the information on the exchange and the currency itself which is pretty straightforward I will need to get the information for the 
exchange rate itself. So I get the market exchange. This is uh, the argument that I pass on. Then I have information about exchange. I get pairs, prices, everything. Then I just run it. Okay. Then we get all this information. Then what I'm going to show you is okay, this API itself we can actually pass on the parameters okay once we pass on the parameter we just need to match to the next api and how how we want to to display the information and this api is actually if i say we see the schema so i'm sorry if i say we see the schema i'm actually returning about all right okay Okay, can you guys hear me? Okay. Yep. Test, test. All right. All right, so uh, we get a market exchange over here. All right. And then, uh, okay, if we see this object itself, I'm actually not returning a string or, or common object. Okay, this tree is an object itself. You see? Is a is a is a prices and base and quote which is written an object of price. Price is a type over here, and then asset is another type. All right. So how we actually chain it? Okay. So we have an object on the resolver itself also. I have a price. I have a base. Then I have a quote. Okay. We call different API. I'm actually chaining and mix mix and match the API by putting this into different modules. Okay. Once it's matched, it will actually just traverse down the information for you. Okay. So if I say here, I will have my base. All right. Let me just. Okay. Okay, you see, I actually have two objects. Then this object, I can actually enter or define any 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 field that I want to define or I want to include. If I don't want to include this, it's fine too. I can actually remove this. Okay, but let me run through this first. So it just be included, or if let's say I don't want to do this. It just it's not included, okay? So it will help you to map all the fields that you want, necessary or not necessary, okay? It's happen all when you do your query, and when you call it, it's just a one network interface, okay? Of course, this is uh, the bad way. This is the bad way for you to return all the API. I should cast. And I should actually uh, prepare all the information first, okay, and only present it to the user. But this this just for uh, demonstration purposes to explain to you guys how we can actually chain all the information, okay? Is there's no rocket science on this? As long as you know how to structure your data, you can actually chain your data and present it in the manner that you want, okay? So it's everything about data. One single query for most of the operation that you need okay this is what the graphql are trying to achieve okay and then for the front end portion for the front end portion okay so i'm i'm using the same has od concept again okay so i will have my render but this render is read by all this information read by 
GraphQL Compose. GraphQL Compose is basically is a command to, to run multiple set of GraphQL and combine it into one, one operation. Okay? So from this, it will return the props. Okay? And, and within the props itself, it will just, it will just return all these parameters. You see? Then all this is a state itself already. So, so I just need to map it. Very simple. It's, it's like my templating engine already. I have my object. Object is readily available there. When the component is mounted, it will load it. It will cast it, everything for you. Okay? But of course, there is there's some more information that you need to know about caching. Offline caching, network caching, there's, there's a lot of way we can do that. Okay? Which is, you can also visit Apollo GraphQL to, to, to learn more about this. Okay? What I'm trying to say that uh, it wraps everything for you. You just need to call it. Okay? Then when you have a new information, you just need to call this data and you just need to refresh, pass on all the parameter that you want or the state that changes, okay? Then it will change the information for you, okay? So in this case, when I change this back to Kraken, it will actually require all the information, but Okay, that's the purpose of we, when we are using HSOD. When you see that I'm I'm changing this drop down box, uh, it's actually doing all the requiring because I haven't set all the cache information. I haven't set all the all the client server cache. Okay, but once I do that, we actually do not need to do that. Let me show you why why so. So uh, we have uh, tools here for Apollo itself. Okay, so every time you call this. Uh, this component when it's mounted, okay, is is to have all the all the queries and all the multi, uh, mutation, and it will automatically put it to the store. It's actually, in fact, it's storing inside the React state itself. Okay, so once you have this data, you can cache it. You can do whatever you combination between client as well as server cache. Okay, both is up to you to use it. Okay, so uh, I hope you guys understand the basic concept of, of this. I also put this uh, code available on, on GitHub. Okay, you can check it out. And yep, if you guys got any question, that's about it. But okay. Yeah, any question? No questions so far? <laughs> Alright, so uh, another thing that I want to show is Apollo. You can, you can go to Apollo data. Okay, so you can get most of the information over here, okay. It's not it's not related to is is built by Meteor but it's not related to Meteor itself. So you can use Apollo by itself, okay? The reason that I'm using Apollo is because it supports React Native Angular, everything that you want to develop in the nowadays platform itself. You can use native iOS, you can use native Android or you, or you want to use React Native to develop your application, it's also fine. And then you have all the server tools, server information that you can use, okay? And and everything that you you need to learn is just ES6, okay? And then both server and and client application, you can make it serverless. You can dockerize your your component in one folder. You can also uh, deploy to serverless environment. That doesn't matter at all, okay? Yep, that's about it. Thank you very much.